Committee on Standards joins us, as you can see. Hi, uh, Chris, thanks very much for joining us on the programme morning, Kate. this morning. Uh, we're moving on now, says the government. Uh, they need to start to help people more with the cost of living crisis. That's exactly what they're going to do. Uh, well, they certainly should be doing that, because if you look at the average family in the Rondo, my, my constituents said that they've lost £2,500 a year and there's, they can't see any means of making that up. Um, that's the you know universal credit being cut and the significant increase in cost of living. Um, but just to go back to the events of yesterday, Steve Barclay just said that everything's changed at Downing Street. Well, the one thing that hasn't changed is the Prime Minister. Um, and... He walked past these events, he attended these events, he raised a glass at them, um, he knew that they were happening. Um, and, and I should make a very, this may sound like a very um, pedantic point, but the rules don't say anywhere about work events, an exemption for work events. They simply said no gatherings were allowed. And these were gatherings and he was at them. So he knew they happened. And indeed, you can see throughout Sue Gray's report that um, quite frequently she refers to and um, the, uh, the obvious fact that a lot of the people who were attending these events knew that they were breaking the rules. They knew that these gatherings were breaking the rules. That's why they had to say, I think we've got away with it. And, you know, the stories about vomit on the carpet and um, red wine stains up the wall and the cleaners having to clean this up. The most, I think, the most pernicious bit about um, the way the, the cleaners and the security staff were treated is these will be the people on the lowest salaries in Downing Street. These will be the people who did abide by the rules. Um, and that's precisely the problem, that there were, there is a set of people in Downing Street, and they're all still there, or nearly all of them are still there, who simply believe that the rules don't apply to them. There's one set of rules for everybody else, in it, and there's one set of rules for them. And it even existed within Downing Street itself. So all the special advisors and the senior people were able to carry on as they wanted, um, but the, when, when the cleaners and the... Um, security staff said, look, this is just not right. You're not abiding by the rules. Uh, they were, you know, they were told where to get off. That's just, it's just morally indefensible, I think. Yeah, the Prime Minister has addressed that, we're told, by Steve Barclay, and he is apologising he, personally to all of those involved. Let me ask you, let me move on, because we've only No, but sorry, Kay, but he isn't. Sorry, Kay, he Well, isn't. he says that he is. It, well, he, he may sort of do that apology that sort of he did in the House of Commons yesterday, but it, it actually amounts to excuse after excuse after excuse. He doesn't believe he did anything wrong or that anybody else did. Uh, he, he's blind to his own failings. He says, we're told that he has apologised to some staff personally and he will apologise to more staff today when they come on to uh, their shift pattern. So, you know, we, we have to accept that that is, is what the Prime Minister has said and that's what he has done and will be doing. Um, you're the chair of the uh, House of Commons uh, Committee on Standards. You've recused... Re Recused. There you go. Yourself. You, you're having difficulty this morning with words, Kay. <laughs> it would appear so. You couldn't say so, France earlier. Yeah, it would appear so. But you've recused yourself from okay. um, that investigation. But procedurally, you will know what happens. So talk us through the investigation. What happens? Uh, so the I, I also chair the Privileges Committee, which has seven members on it. It's four Conservative members, two Labour, and one SNP. Um, the committee will have to decide whether the Prime Minister has lied to Parliament, has misled Parliament. It, incidentally, it's not whether he has deliberately, uh, it's whether he has knowingly misled Parliament. It's an important difference, because if you think of Admiral Nelson, um, you know, who put his, his spyglass up to his blind eye um, and said, what ships? I see no ships. He was lying. He was knowingly lying. Um, and I think that that may be the conclusion that the Privileges Committee comes to. But I'm not sitting on it. Um, as you say, I've recused myself. Uh, and uh, what the committee will have to do is it will have to decide what evidence to gather, whether to call people in to give evidence. They could, if they wanted to, um, ask some of the cleaners and the security staff for their evidence. Could ask um, other members of staff working in Downing Street for their evidence. Um, could require all the email exchanges about uh, following on from when the Prime Minister spoke to, the par to Parliament the first time about the issue. Um, uh, to see what, um, and minutes of meetings that were held to discuss um, all of this. Um, and at some point, no doubt, they would ask the Prime Minister to give evidence, either in, in, in person or in writing. Um, and then they publish a report, which then goes to the House of Commons. It should take, um, I would guess, yeah. I'm, I'm really guessing here, but when the Standards Committee had to do a, a, 
uh, review a case that had been sent to us uh, about the Prime Minister's holiday in Mustique a couple of years ago. Uh, from the moment that we got the memorandum, when the investigation had already been done, to completing it took four months. Wow. So it'll be a while. Yeah. If the committee finds that um, he did mislead Parliament, he doesn't have to resign, though, does he? Uh, no. Well, if the committee... It depends what the committee recommends. The committee could recommend that um, he be suspended from the House uh, for a day or for 10 days, if it's for 10 days or more, um, and the House agrees to that suspension, then he could face a, uh, a recall election in his own constituency if 10% of his voters think um, that there should be a by-election. Um, so all sorts of things are possible, and, and I can't entirely prejudge it because... I'm not going to be on the committee um, because, I, I mean, I, I believe that the Prime Minister has lied. I think he's lied repeatedly. He's done so knowingly. Uh, sometimes he deliberately chose not to know the facts. He didn't investigate enough the facts enough. But he was actually at the gatherings. So okay, he knew that they had happened, but he told Parliament that they hadn't. OK, well, he said that he thought they were work events and that will take yes, us back to the answer you gave me a few moments ago, so we won't go back to that. What we will do, though, is talk about if there's nothing to force Boris Johnson to quit, then what's the point of the investigation? Well, they can force him to quit. Uh, if, if he's... Uh, I, I'm, sure, I'm absolutely certain that if the, the uh, Privileges Committee decides that the Prime Minister has misled Parliament... I, uh, and sends a report to the House to that effect. Uh, Boris Johnson may still try to cling on, but I would have thought that at that point, every self-respecting uh, member of the House of Commons would vote for whatever suspension is recommended by the committee. And if he's suspended from the House, he's out. That's it. Yeah, but you need, you need Conservative MPs to vote for that, don't you? Well, at every stage, look, there are four Conservative members on the Privileges Committee, and I respect them. I, I have absolutely no questions about it them want what they will all want to do a very proper job. I, I know them individually, Alberto, um, Bernard, uh, Andy and Laura, and I'm sure that they will do a very, very thorough job alongside whichever Labour MP replaces me and Alan Dorans. And if that committee comes to a conclusion, which has a Conservative majority on it, if it comes to a conclusion that the Prime Minister has lied to Parliament, I'm absolutely certain that the Parliament, that the Prime Minister will leave office and probably leave Parliament. But it's down to... At the end of the day, it's down to those Tory backbenchers that we often talk about, isn't it? Well, in the first place, it's down to the committee, yes. You're, you're, look, there's a big if at the beginning of all of this. Yes, no, I accept that. And normally, when you say to me, uh, Mr Bryant, if such and such were going to happen, what would you say? And then I normally say, well, I don't answer hypothetical questions. So um, I throw it back to you. I'm, this is hypothetical. If, but, but, nonetheless, hypothetically, if the committee decides that he has misled people, uh, misled Parliament, then I think he'd be gone. But more importantly, I suppose, um, I think there's quite a lot of people in the Labour Party who have now decided that um, actually... Um, for the Labour Party and for the next general election, let's keep Boris Johnson. Um, I think a lot of voters in the country have made their mind up about the conserv a Conservative Party that keeps Boris Johnson, um, uh, you know, the culprit and the liar as their leader. Um, and, and indeed, two Conservatives I bumped into in the lift yesterday on the way to a vote, they, they said to me, look, we've lost the, last, the next general election because Tory colleagues won't act against him, even though they've seen it plain as a pie star. So, but the, the downside is it's bad for Britain because we've got two major crises going on, Ukraine and the cost of living crisis. Okay. And the prime minister isn't able to concentrate on either of them properly because this is going to go on and on and on. And all of these were unforced errors which stem from his personality. They'll all happen again. That mimicking of my accent was a mile off, by the way. Uh, we I wasn't look doing to your see... accent. <laughs> I, I didn't know you had an accent, Kay. <laughs> It's lovely to talk to you, as always. We'll see you soon. Thank you.